YouTube! Hello! 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 I don't know what that was about. I'm kind of doing my, um, my regeneration Doctor Who bit there. Getting used to the new voice. Not that I've regenerated much. Hmm. I've just had my hair cut a little bit. That's all. It's not quite the same, is it? Anywho, I should be editing at the moment. I've got a whacking great story to edit here, but I'm just having a break because I've been at work today. Um, as well as doing this stuff as well when I come home. Uh, I'm taking a break to do a very frivolous YouTube video um, in which I'm going to be reviewing no less than three bots. Three bots from Beast Wars, from the early stages of Beast Wars. And what, what I like about the early stages of Beast Wars is you can actually see the line finding its feet. A lot of the toys that came out early on in Beast Wars don't have any particular place or that they don't have a category or anything like that they're just beast wars bots and they they exist in a kind of limbo they're not transmetals they're not fusels they're not transmetal twos or anything like that later on the line developed all of these subcategories and everything came under them these guys are just as they are they're basic beast wars toys and i really really like them the um the line was kind of experimenting at this point. The whole notion of organic transformers and all of this new stuff like ball joints and integrated weapons was all new at this point. So these things, they stand as kind of evolutionary experiments in the development of transformer technology, I suppose. Anyway, first off we have this lovely little bug. This is this earwiggy thingy is um, Power Pinch, I think his name is, or something like that. He's a Predacon, and in terms of character, there's fuck all about him, really. There's very, very little. He's a bad guy, he's very bad, he's very clever, um, very devious, quite manipulative, and so on. Y your basic Predacon grunt trooper. There's very little character with regards to this guy. But the toy is lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. It looks black on camera, and actually it looks black in hand as well, but when you put it up to the light, you find out it's not. The green, the, the black parts are actually very, 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 very dark, semi-translucent green, which is rather nice, and they contrast rather beautifully with all of this orange that's going on all over him. He also has this little thing going on at the back. His little tail can uh, act as a pincer. That's kind of cool, I suppose. Just like a real earwig. Uh, lots of misconceptions about earwigs. The, 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 there's that old wives' tale that they, they, they nest in people's ears and puncture eardrums. It's bullshit. It's utter, utter wank. Anywho, that's his detachable weapon. Uh, he holds that in his robot mode as a kind of, I don't know, melee weapon. You know, if he featured in the cartoon, you just know that this thing would have been adapted massively. He would be able to sort of generate energy blasts from it or something like that. They were very good mainframe, the people who made the Beast Wars cartoon. They were very good at taking a bit of creative license with the Beast Wars weapons. Some of which, although they're interesting and creative, look a bit useless, really. Anywho, here's Power Pinch. He's very easy to transform, very easy, like all of the Beast Wars basics. You don't really do much, but he's very clever. He has this thing where you have to flip the whole abdomen through this hinge here to form the robot torso. That's kind of cool. I like that. The rest does itself. It's very, very simple, this thing. He does have a few issues in bot mode, actually. Um, he's not quite as gorgeous as his um, beast mode. And he does that thing, that thing that Beast Wars toys... Uh, it's kind of one of the consistent sins of Beast Wars toys, I suppose. In that he doesn't have any hands. What he does have are halves of the, um, the earwig mode head and the... The, the antennae and the jaws from the the earwig that you can kind of, with a little bit of squinting and imagination, take to be pincers or something, I suppose. That's a little bit annoying. 
ba barring that, he's a very, very lovely, coherent little bot. He has this wonderful thing that a lot of the insect formers have with the legs all over the place. Not kibble, it enhances the look of the bot. I like that a lot. Also, barring the legs, nothing. He's a really, really tidy little bot. No kibble or anything. Really solid, really coherent, great face sculpt, very, very characterful. He looks really, really good, actually. I love this little bot. He's stumpy and little and cute. Now, this he doesn't even really hold this properly. There are holes in his hands to hold this, but it, they're not... It's not really right. It doesn't work very well, unfortunately. The moment you start to manipulate it, it just comes out. That's slightly annoying. But I like Power Pinch. He's very cute. And he's sort of ten a penny. He's a very cheap-ass Transformer. Because hardly anyone knows about him. Hardly anyone wants him. So if you get on eBay, you'll find lots of these guys knocking about. And he's awesomely playable. Very, very sweet little guy. Now, the next one I freaking love. I adore this toy, and I've wanted it for a long time. I think I got it for for Ray as a Christmas or birthday present at some point, and it's one of those ones where I got it and I thought, oh, I might keep it and give him something else, because it's just lovely. This little scarab beetle is Insecticon, uh, named after the faction of Decepticons from G the Generation 1 era, and... Um, he actually resembles a little bit Shrapnel from that era, the uh, the Stag Beetle, only this guy's much more obviously a, a genuine insect. He's fucking lovely. I love this toy. Even though it has its flaws, and you can see them by turning the bot around like that, look. Robot arms, robot legs, and these things don't even attach to anything. You just sling the arms down the sides. A little bit of uh, throwback to Generation 1 bots there. That's annoying, but he looks so good in this mode. I don't really mind it. The colours are good, and also his plastic is amazing. The plastic on his shell, mm. oh, listen to that. You can kind of hear it. You can kind of hear the quality. It's really dense, and it's textured as well to feel a bit like genuine carapace or shell. That's nice. I like that. Also, he's quite articulate in this mode. His legs don't move, unfortunately, not without moving the freaking robot arms, which is a bit annoying. But these things, his, his mandibles, you can actually yeah, move. And when you move one, the other one moves as well. That's quite nice. And his antennae move up and down a little bit as well. Very, very cool. Insecticon. Uh, I kind of like Insecticon as a character too. He's not a fighter. Not a fighter at all. He's a reconnaissance expert. And he has hardly any offensive capability whatsoever. Apparently what he really likes to do is just sit and film the carnage that the other Predacons uh, commit. And, I don't know, jack off to it later or something like that. He's got a bit of a fetishistic side. At least he would if I were writing him. Anyway, that is Insecticon in his Scarab Beetle mode. It's, it's, it is a Scarab Beetle, but it has elements of a Stag Beetle as well. I mean, these jaws are very Stag Beetle-like, but not quite. He, isn't, he doesn't look quite like a Stag Beetle. He doesn't look quite like a Scarab Beetle. He's kind of like a bizarre hybrid between the two. And this guy, the transform... Well, he doesn't even transform, really. It's a complete automorph. You don't do anything to transform this guy. There, he's done. <laughs> That is literally it. You pull the legs down and the whole torso flips around to form the butt. And then it's just a case of positioning his arms and his legs and his head however you wish. There is Insecticon in his bot mode. Again, with the insect formers, he's got all of these wonderful appendages coming off of him. And I love the way the beast mode mandibles come up here to form this lovely chest section. That's very, very cool. In fact, he, also, he looks like he's akin a power pinch does he not these two look like they could have been protoform brothers or something that's kind of cute like that he's got a very evil face sculpt his face you can't see it on this fucking camera but his face sculpt is malevolent it's very evil apparently according to his bio in his legs he has an array of cameras and sensory equipment that he uses for his reconnaissance work now Although he doesn't have much in the way of offensive capability, he does have some. And this, this is one of the best integrated Beast Wars weapons I've ever seen. The, the Beast Wars toys are great for having weapons that you can fix into the, um, the Beast modes or which become parts of the Beast modes. This guy, flip open his shell, 
And there are two little pieces in here which you just take out and then you can fix them together like so and flip out these bits to form a little sort of energy crossbow thing. That's fucking cool insofar as I'm concerned. I love I love transformers that have archaic looking weapons that have things like bows and arrows and cross belts and maces and all of that stuff that is really cool insofar as I'm concerned love it I absolutely love everything about this toy he is a, a stunner and also very 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 easy to get a hold of he is cheap ass and everywhere pick him up for literally pennies on ebay fantastic buy get him now, PS de Resistance for this uh, video is one that uh, one of my favourites from this year's auto assembly. A bit bigger than the others, I, I suppose. By those would be considered scout classes, I think, by today's standards. This guy would be considered a a very big deluxe, a very big deluxe. He's almost treading Voyager scale. This utter beauty is Mantera. Man Terror. He is fucking beautiful. He's a very, very, very large, very organic looking praying mantis. And good God, I, I've just been overawed by this guy. I've been playing with him a lot lately, just getting him in hand and transforming him. He's, a, he's an utter joy. An utter joy. He's beautiful to look at. He's got tons of detail. He has these big ass claws which <laughs> look at the articulation on that how freaking awesome is that that's the kind of things that that you couldn't even have a wet dream about in the g1 era that level of articulation is unreal he also has a little gimmick he has these little sort of energon power blades in his claws that he can fire off but it, it's stupid he doesn't really need them at all um, they're just the kind of things that get lost. And, uh, firing shit. We don't want that. We don't want that. What we want are really, really good bots. And this guy is just beautifully, beautifully designed. He's mostly just this this very, very bright green offset by reds and translucent purple wings and legs. And he does have a kind of a little bit of undercarriage kibble. You can definitely see bits of butt under there. But we won't hold that against him because he's so gorgeous. Ah, yes, he is uh, no, 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 no. What was I going to say? What was I going to say? Character, character. Again, there's not really much to go on with this guy. He did feature in some of the comics, but he was just a grunt. He was a, a background character who was there to get eviscerated by various Maximals or by by um, Shocker Act or whoever whoever happened to be there at the time. Um, he is uh, what is he now? Mantera, Mantera. <laughs> there really is very, very, very little to go on, to be honest with this guy. He doesn't have much in the way of characterization at all. All you really know is that he really likes to eviscerate and pick apart his opponents. Uh, very much like the Mantis, whose form he bears. They tend to pick apart their prey before eating them. I a little bit of creative license. I like to infer that he has a kind of surgical thing going on, that he's kind of like the Predacon equivalent of a surgeon or a butcher. Kind of like a mad professor kind of thing, the, the Victor Frankenstein of the Predacons. But that's just my little addition. Ah but character aside, and in terms of plastic, this thing is fabulous. It really is stunning to have in the hand and to play with. He's so articulate, and you can just uh, you can just play with him. I love that. His transformation is great. He's got a really cool transformation. This whole section here with the legs, flip them out. In his legs are just he's got a, he's got a quite sexy legs actually as a lot of the Beast Wars toys do. Then you've got these this array of hinges on the inside. All you do is flip them up, and that becomes his pelvis. And then the whole torso section flips down. What's the arms flip up to get out of the way of everything else? But this is this is where it gets really really clever. You have to position the arms in such a way that you can close the hinges that his legs are situated on to form uh, 
the torso, and the legs are kind of multiple choice, as they are with most insect formers. They sit on his chest rather than sort of sticking out all over the place. And you can put them pretty much how and as you wish, but they seem to form almost like a, I don't know, like a symbol on his chest, which is rather cool. Let's do it with the other side. <laughs> there we go. Get on there, you bastard. Big problem. Bits pop off all over the place when you're transforming this guy. That's a little bit annoying. Not not to the degree of, like, Universe Galvatron or anything like that, but he does have a tendency for bits to pop off. Then all you do is um, flip the arm section back up and around so that his arms are in the right place rather than sitting far too low down on his body as they often do on Generation 1 Transformers. <sighs> and then it really is just a case of getting this guy into the most kick-ass pose that you can. And that's another thing I love about this toy. And Beast Wars toys in general, even the shit ones, their posability is unreal. You can make them do things that are just obscene, which is very cool insofar as I'm concerned. But that is Mantera's robot mode, and I just, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. His Mantis mode was good, his bot mode is better. Doesn't really have hands again, he just has these massive Mantis pincers. Doesn't need him, doesn't need him. He looks awesome with those. It's just a stunner, stunner of a bot mode. And again, this guy is largely unknown, very, very cheap, pennies on eBay. It's a joy to have this thing. And his head sculpt, again, can't see it on this fucking camera. Beautiful, beautiful head sculpt. Mm, this is the stuff. This is the proper plastic crack, people. It's the, uh, it's the stuff that reinvigorates my enthusiasm for the Beast era, which is undoubtedly my favourite era of the Transformers in terms of the toys, in terms of the mythology, and all of that shit. This guy epitomises everything that's good about it. He is fantastic. Very organic looking. He's one of those odd Predacons who looks almost completely organic. Which I like, again, very, very cool. A bit like Sky Shadow, the Fusor, who I'm sure I'll be reviewing at some point in the not-too-distant future. Love it. These guys, all three of them, are fantastic bots. And utter bargains. You could buy all three of them for less than a tenner with a little bit of uh, scouting around very, very easily. And this one in particular gives me a hell of a lot of joy at the moment. 